This Equipment World video is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. Hi everyone, welcome back to The Dirt. I'm your host Brian and today, I apologize, but we're going to get a little heavy on you. Uh, I want to talk about a topic that we don't really ever talk about in the trades, and that is suicide. Yes, I realize we're right here at the holidays and this is a pretty heavy, depressing topic, but I think it's a really important topic and there's a reason I'm having this discussion now. I actually want to challenge you guys as employers to make a change in your company. But before we get into that, I want to take a second to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its exhaust after treatment system has traditionally been seen as an either or proposition when it comes to choosing the engine oil that's going to protect your system. And that's exactly why Chevron spent more than a decade of R&D work developing a no compromise formulation. Now I don't have to tell you why a clogged DPF is bad news, but here's the real kick in the pants. 90% of that ash clogging up your DPF and then upping your fuel and maintenance costs? It comes from your engine oil. You might be thinking, why don't they make an engine oil with less ash in it then? You'll be happy to learn that Chevron agrees with you. They've developed a new ultra low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology cuts sulfate ash by 60%, radically reducing the rate of DPF clogging and extending the DPF service life by two and a half times. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, now you don't. Dello 600 ADF with OmniMax technology. It's time to kick some ash. So let's talk about this for a second. I had no idea that the suicide rate in our industry is as high as it is. So I had heard that suicide was high in our industry, but I had never actually looked at the numbers. It turns out our industry has four times the suicide rate of the national average. That's not a little bit. That's significantly higher than the national average. And why is that? Well, when you start looking into it, it has a lot to do with the fact that we're in an industry that is very high stress. I think we can all agree that we are under a lot of pressure on these job sites. You have deadlines that you have to meet. You're generally in charge of a lot of very interesting characters, we can call it. And all of that pressure falls on to the individuals on the site, superintendents, foremen, but then also at the level of the individual. I've talked about it on my personal YouTube channel before, that a lot of times your frontline guy feels the pressure of that project bearing down on him because he has his superintendent, his foreman, sometimes even people from the office out on the job, constantly reminding him that there's a deadline that we absolutely have to meet. This is a really stressful environment to work in. Not to mention we have hazards on the job. It's regular that people get injured or maimed. There's job site accidents that happen on a regular basis, which again, add to that pressure and stress. That's a lot of factors and dynamics at play that we, especially as men, and I and, and I realize that females also experience the same thing on job sites as far as a stress standpoint, but what I really struggle with in our industry, what, what a lot of people I believe struggle with but no one wants to talk about is the mentality of being this machismo manly man on the job, that we can't talk about the fact that we're stressed, the fact that we can't admit that we aren't happy doing what we're doing, or we're not happy with the job site conditions we're working in, or we are starting to cave under the pressure of all of these deadlines and all of these really, really important things that are resting on our shoulders. That machismo mentality in our industry ultimately needs to change. And I think men especially struggle with this on the job site. And that is one of the contributing factors to suicide. It's not okay in our mind to talk about the fact that you're struggling with suicidal thoughts. It's not okay to struggle with the job in general because that would be making you appear weak. That would be somehow uh, letting your guard down and we can't, ha we can't have that in the trades. And that's a mentality that really needs to change. And so as we come against the holidays, as we prepare to go into the new year, I wanted to challenge you, my audience here, as I look at the demographics of who I'm talking to, it's primarily business owners. It's primarily people in upper management of these construction companies. 
you guys are the ones who can really affect change here. And so my challenge to you is come up with a new year resolution for either yourself or your upper management team. Can we make one change in our policies, in how we handle things on the job? Can we make one change that could potentially help our frontline employees, our foremen, our superintendents on the job site? Can we help them if they're struggling in this area? And I want to be clear with my challenge here. This does not mean put up a poster in the break room or send out a flyer that's printed off of the OSHA site. Let's be honest, those things aren't helpful. If I'm struggling with suicidal thoughts and someone hands me a sheet they just printed off of OSHA's website on how to prevent suicide, that's not going to do anything for me. And likewise, it's not going to do anything for your employees. So my challenge is, what can you materially do to impact your employees? Is it something where maybe you take a few extra Saturdays off this year? Maybe you dial back on your hours just a hair. Maybe you as the owner of the company or as the upper management team go out on your job sites a few more times than you would regularly in the year and take some pizza to the guys. Actually hang out and genuinely ask how they're doing. Is there something you can sit down with your foreman and your superintendents and actually talk to them about how they're doing? Not on the project side, but how they personally are doing. These are just some of the ideas that come to mind of how you guys can make material changes to your company in a relatively small way. We're not talking about going out and substantially changing the way you do business. I mean, we are potentially if you decide to take Saturdays off this year or maybe have a couple extra Saturdays off, which I would highly encourage you to do because another one of those factors that really leads into suicide is the crazy amount of work hours and the lack of sleep. Those are both two huge things that play into suicide. So maybe you do decide to take some Saturdays off, but it doesn't have to be that in particular. I challenge you to really analyze your company and think about some ways that you can really help your employees that might be struggling in this area. Somehow you can change the culture and have an impact on your employees. And I challenge you to figure out how. So that's all I've got. This is a relatively short one today. I'm sorry, but at the same time, It's the holidays, and I don't want to keep you guys away from your families. I want you to go enjoy yourselves, but let's make a resolution together that we're going to help have an impact in our industry, not with the things that we build, not with the things that we accomplish, not with the number of bonuses we bring in, but let's make a change for our employees to help them in areas they might be struggling with. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a great set of holidays. Merry Christmas. And we'll see you on the next episode of The Dirt. You know what? I thought of one more thing I want to say. For those of you who are watching that might be struggling with this problem, I need you to recognize something and I need you to look right in my eyes when I say it. You're not weak. You're not a failure. This is something that other people struggle with. This is something that other people deal with. And it's okay to reach out to people and get help for this. It is not a problem with your masculinity None of these false things that we have in our heads that stop us from talking to people really exist. You're a bigger man for stepping up and asking for help than you are by sitting back and just trying to deal with it yourself. So if you are struggling with suicidal thoughts, I would highly encourage you, please reach out to someone and just have a conversation. It doesn't have to be a professional, although I would recommend it. It doesn't have to be a professional. Sometimes just having a conversation with someone who cares about you can help you get through that and help you get and find the help that you need. So again, Merry Christmas. Sorry for being such a downer on this one, but we'll see you on the next episode.